Hey Swifts, my name is Mort and I'm here to teach you all about the brush tool in Flash. So before I start, I'll just say right away that I won't be covering the brush size, the brush shape and the pressure sensitivity for the brush tool because those settings kind of explain themselves, so I feel that it's a bit unnecessary. <laughs> I've also prepared a demonstration ball that will show how the brush function when it interacts with line and fill. To quick explain line and fill, Flash basically only have two drawing mechanics which is line and fill, and the pencil is using line and the brush is using fill. So with that covered, let's get started. So what the heck is brush mode? Well it's a different way that your brush can interact with line and fill, and you can change that by going down here to the left, there's a button called brush mode, and if you click on that you'll get a few different options that will interact with line and fill differently. So the first brush mode we have is paint normal, which is also the default brush mode for flash. The way paint normal function is that it basically just don't give a damn about anything and it paints on top of everything, so as you can see here when I just do on top of my demonstration ball here it breaks up all the lines and it just paints on top of all my fill and outside the demonstration ball as well. So there's not a whole lot to say about the paint normal other than it don't give a damn and it paints on top of everything. The next brush mode we have is paint fill. The way paint fill function is that like paint normal it draws on top of everything except that it doesn't break the lines now. So you can see I still have my perfect circle and line within my demonstration ball and it haven't broken any of the lines but it still draws on top of the actual fills within the ball and it draws outside the ball as well. Next up is paint behind. The way paint behind function that it paints behind any object so if I again draw on top of this like a crazy madman blue blue loop you can see it only paints behind my line and fill so it doesn't break any of the line and it doesn't paint within any of the fill. This is really useful if you want to draw something without using layers. Next up we have paint selection, and paint selection is a bit different from all the others. You actually have to select an object first, so let's say I select both of these two here and I use my paint selection, it will only paint within whatever I selected. So for example if I only select my top object here and I start painting, it will only paint on the actual object I've painted and it doesn't break my lines either. This can be really useful for something like shading if you need to shade a ball or if you need to shade like a minor thing on a character you've drawn. And the last brush mode we have is paint inside. So whatever I draw on first it will only paint on that object. So I'm gonna start my line right here. I'm gonna go crazy like I did before. But as you can see it only paints within that object. So it functions kind of like paint select except that you don't have to select something to draw on it. Though it can only paint within one object so as you can see here if I want to paint both objects here it will only paint on one of them. So the brush also has some useless settings I feel anyway. It has something called object drawing and it has lock fill. If I select my brush tool and press J you can see here my object drawing is activated and if I draw something now it makes this purple bluish box around it. That's because it basically made it into a sort of symbol, so if I double click on this now with my selection tool, I get into this little box like it was a symbol, but it's actually not a symbol because it's not stored over here in my library. But it functions kind of like a symbol if you don't want to fill up your library with all these different symbols. Then you can use objects, but I've never really found a use for this myself because I like to have everything as a symbol so I can always find it in my library and it won't get lost. The next one is lock fill, and lock fill you'll find right next to the object drawing, and to be honest, I don't know really what this do, it's something with gradient, but I haven't really found any use for it while using the brush tool. I found a use for it while using the bucket, but the brush tool it just seems really useless for me. So the last thing I want to cover is the brushes properties. If I select my brush tool and go up here to the right and click on properties, you can see it only get one option beside all the standard settings, and that is smoothening. To explain what smoothening does, I'm gonna try and take smoothening down to 0%, and I'll draw a line here where it says 0%, then I'm gonna put it up to 50%, draw a line where it says 50%, and very last I'm gonna put it up to 100%, and draw a line where it says 100%. So you can already see by now these lines looks very different from each other. But to explain more what the smoothing really does, I'm gonna go up here to my sub selection tool and select all three objects. So what smoothing really does is that it tries to have as few anchor points on the line you draw with your brush. So you can see on 100% it tries to have as few lines as it can 
and on 50%, it still cares about trying to have few anchor points, but it really just kind of throw them in there if there need to be one a certain place. And on 0%, it don't give a damn, it just throws all the anchor points in the line you draw, so it gets really rough as you can see here. And all three are really useful, you can use them for very different things. If you want to shade something super smooth, I'd say you take up the smoothness. If you want something to look rough and kind of messy, well go for the 0% or just play around with it. I usually have my brush smoothing between 40 and 60 depending on what I'm drawing. Hey Twips, thanks a lot for watching my video, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you have any questions leave me a comment below or hit me up on Twitter.